Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. So is there anybody who's not of the church, but there's no church now in Joel. Joel, but it's prophecy. And those are not Jews. And we are looking at the tribulation in the second advent. The church is gone. The church is raptured before the tribulation period. Prepare war. A war is coming. There are at least two more world wars according to the Bible. And one angelic war between Satan and Michael. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men, we looked at all the nations yesterday, let all the men of war, army, marines, navy, air force, Coast Guard, Marines, let them all come up. Beat your plowshares into swords. What you're using for plowing and crops, make a sword of it. You know, I forget, I forget what it was, the uh, A&E, or the History Channel. They have a good show about making swords. And it's funny because they'll give you parts of something. And you got to take this parts of something, and you got to turn it into a sword. And they've had cars, and they had toys, and they've had all kinds of junk found in a barn. Right, that's Joel 3.10. You're pruning hooks, used for farming, into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Boston strong. Orlando strong. That's all Bible. God says, prepare for war. And you're a farmer, you better turn your instruments into war implements. Now it's interesting, if you go to Isaiah chapter 2. Isaiah chapter 2. Uh, verse 4. In a roundabout way, because... You'll find Isaiah 2, verse 4. We probably studied this when we did this when we were going through Isaiah 2, 4. You'll find what we're going to read on a very interesting building in New York City. What we're going to read now is what you will find on the United Nations building. He shall judge among the nations... You won't read that. And shall rebuke many people. That You won't see that. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. Their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against the nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Isaiah is a reversal of what Joel says. And the United Nations quotes, oh, we're going to have peace. Do you know how many wars there's been since October 24, 1945, when the United Nations began their assembly? How many wars and conflicts? We're at war right now with Russia and Ukraine. 
China's upset with Taiwan, or Japan wanted them to. But Isaiah 2, 3 is the millennium. When there's peace, no war like the reign of Solomon. Solomon, his name means peace. Jerusalem, the city of peace. Now back to Joel. Now Joel is a complete opposite. Joel says Beat your plowshares in the sword, your pruning horses. Prepare for war. Before the second advent, in the tribulation period, after the second advent, after the nation has been judged, the millennium, God says take those swords and spears and turn them back to farm influence. For instance, October 24th, 1945, there's been all kinds of wars. So there's two more world wars coming up. The United Nations is not going to give you peace. The United Nations, I believe, is going to be a system set up with the aid of the Antichrist. Or aiding the Antichrist. Man is unwillingly approaching himself to God's prophecy. Because we read the other day, look at verse 2, Joel 3, 2. I will also gather all nations. I have over here. I got it written down. There's only three nations that are not in, in uh, the United Nations today: Kosovo, Palestine, and Vatican City. We're getting there. Now they say the reason why Vatican City is not in the United. They say it's not big enough, so you wait for that Catholic Church to grow. You watch and start seeing the, the Vatican City start getting bigger and bigger. You watch Palestine start making happy with Israel. You watch the Arabians try to make happy with everybody to get them in the United Nations. Because it says all nations. And I don't understand the corporal, corporate soul. I mean, I'm not saying it right. I apologize. America's got its foot in the United Nations, and it can't pull it out. Assemble yourselves, verse eleven. Do you know what they call the United Nations? United Nations group of people. United Nations. Congregation. Nope. United Nations Church. Nope. They call themselves the United Nations Assembly. Out of 1611 King James Bible, I don't even want to look at what the other Bibles say. I don't care what the other Bibles say. There's only one Bible. I don't know. I don't know if they, but I'll tell you one thing. God knows what He wrote. And if you if you haven't watched television and movies and the and the, the music and the theater, the media arts, Satan knows the Bible too. You got. One place in the life of Jesus, Satan quotes the Bible out of context, but he quotes the Bible. Out of context, he 
kind of close to the Bible to Eve. You're going to see man, the devil, and God work their way to be what the prophecy said. I don't like President Biden. But God and the devil are using President Biden. I don't know who's using them more. I'm, I don't know. If it is Satan, okay, it's Satan. But you don't have the authority because you're not following scriptures and praying for your leader. But I know that, that as Satan caused David to number Israel and God, Jehovah, caused Israel, David to number Israel. I know God is using Biden for the next great ruler called the Antichrist. I know why Russia and Ukraine are fighting. You'll find that over James. The reason why men fight. I know why their children killing each other in this in the school. You know, they, they, you know, it's been an explosion of guns since that Texas shooting. What is that all about? Sin. Sin gets worse. Jesus told us it will get worse. Paul told us it will get worse. John the apostle told us it will get worse. And only the dumb Baptist preachers will say, oh, we're going to have a revival. <laughs> Without reading the lie of the church age. But what I'm saying is not to pick on everybody, but what I'm saying is we got a group of nations together except for three. The Bible says all. They are called the United, uh, United Nations Assembly. And I'm getting that from a King James 1611 Bible. And they're all going to get together so God can judge them. Whether they know it or not. Whether President Biden knows that he is a tool of God and or Satan. Because Satan couldn't attack Job unless he had God's permission. When you read your Bible. And when you rightly divide the Bible as word to study, now I will be in heaven with the other Christians while this is happening. Christians don't even know today, well, you know, I'm going to die, I'm going to go to heaven. But do you know you're going to see Satan? The dragon? What the Bible says, you're going to get to heaven, oh, Jesus, great wonder, hey, hallelujah, holy, ho ah! What is that? Dragon. That's Satan. What's he doing in, he in heaven? Your pastor didn't tell you? Imagine those carnal Christians that never studied about well, when we get into the intergalactic Star Wars. Who come your father? Of Michael and, and, the, and his angels and Satan and his angels having the bath. Imagine Christians sitting back. I hope I don't fall. I hope I don't lose it. You're not involved. We're in heaven. There's a great war. Yeah. Get ready to shout. Well, what are you talking about? The Bible says once Satan's thrown out of heaven, we're going to have a shout and hallelujah. You know, Israel's going to be shouting at that point. Oh my God. Oh my. You know what the world's going to be shouting? Oh, Satan's going to come down. He's going to be in fury because he knows his time is short. He knows scripture. Here's these people according to the scripture that they don't even believe. You imagine if you were to take Joel chapter 3 and mail it to every, I don't know what they call the people, Whatever spokesman of the countries that are there. By the way, I posted a picture. I was looking at pictures today for the title of this thing. You know when you look at the United Nations where they sit and meet? And they get the speakers area. 
And there's more than one person, but they get the speakers. And then up behind them, they got the big television sets. You know what it reminded me when I saw those pictures? And I ain't talking about your, I'm talking about your typical churches today. I've been in two churches. I've been a member of two churches with those television screens just like that. Friend, we're getting ready. It's going to get to the point when, when the church is raptured and people are going to go to the church going, hey, this looks like the United Nations. This is no better. You know, we can watch the Antichrist from the Baptist church. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen. I guarantee you that Israel will be kicked out of the United Nations by the Antichrist. And gather yourselves together round about. Well, what are they doing? Except for three nations. They get themselves together. In New York. They stand against Israel. Remember we read last night that, we, that they, they trade off the land of Israel for peace? And you're going to say as a Baptist, God bless America, when the United Nations sits in New York, one of our states, one of the 50 states of our union, and they are against Israel, they're, they're only fooling by allowing Israel in. They don't stand for Israel. And, and you're going to say God bless America when God says anybody who's against, that, against Israel is a curse. Friend, the only way you're going to remove that curse is if you tell the United Nations move out. You know, maybe, maybe, and I'm going to throw this out there, and you can actually throw this in the garbage. Maybe New York is going to be Babylon. You do know there's a Babylon, New York. But, I mean, you know, I'm not going to try to start any. Conspiracy theories or anything, but unless the United Nations moves. I mean we got Maryland right right beneath it. Gather yourselves to, we got every religion here. Gather yourselves to get it roundabout. Thither cause the mighty ones to come down, O Lord. That's us. How mighty are we? Didn't we read in chapter 2? Someone's going to hit us with a sword. Ain't going to do nothing. What, what are X-Men, G-Men, what, what are those Marvel comic people called? The superheroes? I got those superheroes. I'm going to be able to leap tall buildings and not break ranks. You're going to be able to shoot me and the, and the bulls are going to bounce off my chest. Calm down, that's the church. The heathen, the nations are getting together on the earth and we're getting together on the horses behind Jesus. We're going to come together and Jesus said he's going to judge all the nations. And those that help Israel be considered as sheep. And those that against Israel be considered as goats. And those goats on the left hand of Jesus depart from me, workers of iniquity. I never knew you. On those sheep that are on the right, come with Israel, come with my church into millennium. And rejoice with the ones that you helped. <laughs> I mean, Israel is going to be more than happy to help those that helped them in the tribulation. Let the heathen be awakened in their sleep. And come to the Valley of Jehoshaphat. We talked about that last, last night. There is no Valley of Jehoshaphat. It is 
the, the place of Armageddon, of Megiddo, the Valley of Jezreel, by this. What if between now and the second advent, what if that valley gets the name? That would be a kick in all the scholars. See, let me, see, I got, I got a brand new Bible the other day. I had to get a little bigger because my eyesight is going. And this Bible has, has some pretty good notes. But let me go over here real quick. Oh, they're funny. But, I mean, somebody, uh, Dallas Seminary, and there's, oh, there's a group of, okay, there's a bunch of scholars in school. There's Southern Baptist people put into these notes and that. But it says here, the Valley of Jehoshaphat is literally the valley with Jehovah Judge. That's future. But no valley by this name is known. Most likely this is the Valley of Jezreel, and this is what everybody says. Near Megiddo, where the battle arm again will take place, Revelation 16, 16. Now, I am so cruel enough to throw out there. What if there comes a time that for some whatever reason that valley is called the Valley of Jehoshaphat. That, that, that's, the scholars are going to be shocked. I wonder what the modern Bible say, and I don't care what they say. Because everything is going to line up with the King James Bible. But it is Armageddon. Oh, I love Revelation. Oh, I read, I read about Revelation and Job. Didn't we see it in Hosea? How often is your Bible open to be read in Joel? For there will I, God, Jesus, sit to judge among the heathen round about. And that's where Jesus talks about he's going to separate the niche, the nation, the sheep, and the goat. There it is. After he, after he tramples them. Put ye the sickle, that's the tool used for harvest. For the harvest is right. And remember Jesus talked about the end of the, end of the world. He's going to send the angels out and they're going to reap the fields. And they're going to bind up the chaff. And they're going to put it in quenchable fire. And he's going to take the grapes or, or the wheat. He's going to put them in the barn. Here we go. We're talking about, according to Jesus Christ... Joel 3.13, we are at the end of the world. We're at the second advent. There's a thousand year reign of Jesus Christ that will follow. And then that's it. Satan's loose and put into the lake of fire. Heaven and earth will flee. Come get you down. For the press is full. This is all talking about the judgment. The fat's overflowing. That's, that's where the blood Pastor try to tell me that that blood that's on Jesus' garment when he comes back is his own blood. I called him a fool. He sat on my couch and did not give me no scripture while I gave him scripture. And I still put scripture on Facebook with his initials. Or I say, Mr. Jordan, here it is, the blood of, 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 the, of the enemies of Christ. When you partake of the Lord's Supper, unlike the Catholics, we say that that grape juice is a symbolic of the blood of Jesus. Well, here the, the grapes, the wine, is symbolic of the blood of the enemies. For their wickedness is great. Oh, we live in a terrible age where you know people don't know what what, what sex they are. Uh, is it Massachusetts? I read one of them states said, "Oh, on your license, you can you know, you can put whatever you want for sex." Kids are shooting each other with with AKs and and we're, we want to get rid of handguns and. <clears throat> Cops are getting shot over here, and the cops don't know how to respond over there. And, you know, there's this tragedy and, and death and, and misery. And 
this wickedness all around us worldwide. And God says, God says, at the second advent, their wickedness is great. Now, you remember what Jesus said? He said, as the days of Noah. Take your Bibles to Genesis 6 to 11. Let me show you something about the days of Noah. Genesis 6 11, the earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said to Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence among them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. That sure looks like what's going to be at the second advent. Back to Joel. You know, when, remember when Jesus said in the days of Noah, he's not talking about the church age. He's not even talking to the church. You know, there'll be rumors of earthquakes, there'll be earthquakes in diverse places. Where, that's not us. That's not written to us. You're not properly, there are no signs for the rapture, but what Paul said to Timothy, men shall be lovers of themselves, you know, and, and there's a long list. Multitude. And multitude. That's a lot. In the Valley of Decision. For the day of the Lord, second advent, there it is, is near in the valley of decision. That's your judgment. Right after Armageddon. Now, watch. Watch the seventh year of the tribulation period. Here we go. Ready? The sun and moon shall be darkened. Remember, the moon will be as blood. Or like the blood. The sun will go out. Oh, the sun will come up in the morning. No, one day it won't. Then the Malachi says, the son of righteous, coming with healing in his wings, for a nation who's beautiful, for a nation's been rejected, for a nation that's hiding. And the stars shall withdraw their shining, well, a third of them. <laughs> The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, second advent, and utter his voice from Jerusalem. He's on the throne. And the heavens and earth shall shake, earthquake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people, second advent. Titus 2.13 also, it's for the Jew and for the Christian. But the Jews are not looking for the blessed hope right now. They're looking for peace. Not even many of them looking for the, the temple. And the strength of the children of Israel. Now, verse 17 is important. Because we got to shoot down some Baptist heresies. That's my job. So shall ye know that I am the Lord. Ezekiel says that a lot. Your God dwelling in Zion. There he is. He's in Jerusalem. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. Israel's in their land. My holy mountain. That's Jerusalem. Now the King James Bible, please read to me the next five words. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. 
Oh, Stanley, do you want to go to the holy city? I went to the holy city and I had a Catholic tell me. I went to the holy city. And this Arabian on a bus took us to all the... I mean, this is, this is what I heard pastors say. That place ain't holy. Not with the Catholics running around and deceiving you of your money. Not with the Arabians telling you what the Bible says and they don't even read the Bible. They're not even the chosen people. We're going to follow the footsteps of Jesus. Can I go to the store and get some plaster? Why? Well, I want to take a plaster cast of the footsteps of Jesus. And I want it hanging on my wall right next to the footsteps poem, which is not scripture. Oh, I got the footsteps poster. Hey, Bible. And some idiot wrote something down is now making a million dollars of Christians who are so stupid. Maybe sometimes Jesus didn't carry you because he wanted you to go and get strong. You know, when I came out of the hospital last year, they told me to go to the gym and try to work out to the best of my ability. Now, what if I went to the gym and I went to the person, that, 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 that the counselor or whatever the guy was, I said, sir, this is my, I got this, and I came out of the hospital, and I said, all right, will you please go on the exercise bike for me? And please go on the exercise bike. Every time I come here, I want you, sir, to go on the exercise bike for me for five minutes. I mean, you're to carry me. You're to, you're to pick me up and lift me up. And it's not benefiting me. Sometimes we got to walk. Sometimes we got to carry that weight. Sometimes we got to go because to build up strength. Jesus would be so foolish to say, oh, give that to me, when it would strengthen us. But, you know, he'll carry you through. I lived through ten, uh, ten. I lived through two dying wives in a hospital bed. Jesus did not take away the cancer. He allowed them to die and I had to carry that. Oh, you know, Jesus Christ holds your hand. No, he has not held my hand. I am as lonely as anything. And my prayers are for somebody for God to give me so I can hold their hand, so I can hug them, so I can kiss them, so I can love them and they love me, so I can text them and say, hey, I hope you're having a good day. I miss you. When they come to the door and say, I love you. I miss you. Hey, you have a good day. Sorry, Jesus does not text me. And if I got a text from Jesus, I will erase it because it was not Jesus. And if you were to get me the footsteps, whatever the thing, post and all that, I will kindly put it in the garbage. And if, if, if there's tomato sauce that we had or something like that, I, I would put tomato sauce over it so nobody would grab it out of the garbage because it does not. Because then you get, oh, you know, you rank on Joe Olsen. Oh, this is what you teach with your footsteps. How many beatings did Paul take? Not once did Jesus, wait a minute, hold on. Paul, step aside, I'll take it for you. So we're looking at the thing. Then shall Jerusalem be holy. I believe in, in the book of Revelation, everybody loves. I believe he calls Jerusalem Sodom and Gomorrah. I think it is. There shall no stranger pass through her anymore. When we go to holy Jerusalem with Jesus on the throne, the Arabian is not going to tell us the footsteps of Jesus. The Catholic is not going to show us shrines. 
And this is the place where Mary sat and breastfed Jesus. Or whatever nonsense they got. You know who those strangers are? People who don't know God. You know who strangers are today? You go over to Holy Jerusalem and you got a Catholic or you got an Arabian or you even got an atheist. He's going to show you a Bible they don't believe in. Catholics don't believe in the Bible. They killed Christians for having a Bible. They killed. We want to put the Bible in English for the people. They killed them. And they took the Bibles they had and they burned them. The Arabians. Their God is not the God of the Bible. They are not the chosen people. And never mind the atheists. Christians are so stupid. I could make a million dollars off Christians if I wanted to. I could take any Bible verse and put it on, on something and I could sell it and they would buy it. I could do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And Stiley comes in and says, okay, go to New York City, get on top of the Empire State Building and do a flying uh, 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 nosedive do a flying swan dive onto the city below, get hit by a bus, get hit by 40 yellow taxi cabs, and then get up and say, Oh, glorious day, glorious day. Oh, I, I can't do that. Well, wait a minute. I thought you said you could do all things. You take it out of context. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So we're gonna, all going to pay for a movie for a guy who, who is Scientology. And you know it's gonna, they're, they're, uh, America's going to win at the end, at the end of that movie. I, can't, I haven't seen the movie. I don't want to see it. That's what's going to happen. And I heard that they've taken footage from the first movie and they readapted it into the second movie. And you're going to pay money? I even heard that Mr. Scientology is not even in. They don't even know what happened to him. Maybe he died. We don't know. Well, you know, some they were in actual airplanes. Well, so what? Send them over to Russia and bomb the heck out of Russia with, with the people you, you, you're going to watch this weekend. Well, well, yeah, well, well, well. Christians are stupid. I know, because last week I went to the to the bookstore over here at the mall. I was looking for a King James Bible. I looked all around. And you know what? They're stupid. All the junk they have. He said, what junk did you find? ESV, New King James. And there were any Bible perversions I've never even heard of. Today's men's Bible. Oh. They'll probably come up with tomorrow. I don't know what a penis is, Bible. Telling you, you don't read the Bible. We have the United Nations setting up, and, and Christians don't know this, so God can judge them. <laughs> How convenient <laughs> that God already knew. And you know what? <laughs> Jesus, yes, Father. How are we going to get these nations together so, so you can judge them? Father, yes. They're going to gather themselves together. Oh, okay, no problem. And they've been gathered since 1945. And they quote Isaiah 2-4. In all reality, they should be quoting Joel 3. Because there's been more wars and battles and conflict since they began. The United Nations has their own troops. <laughs> That ain't peace. You know what the UN stands for? Unpeaceful. 